Hello there, I'm Freeland1787, and this is a tutorial on learning the any% percent speedrun for Castlevania 1. This is a sub-12 tutorial, so knowing the strats for this should make you not only a pretty solid runner, as there are only about 63 sub-12s in the current leaderboard, but also competent racer as long as you develop these strats. These are pretty easy to learn, easy to learn strats, and with enough practice, it shouldn't take too much effort to get sub-12, or maybe even as high as sub-11. 45. So we'll start this game. We have an opening cinematic that takes about 9.53 seconds. You can put that on your countdown timer or you can try and time it up so that way you get the timer to start on control timing. It doesn't really matter because the uh, frames frame count only matters once you get to 1140 and below. So Castlevania has a lot of frame based manipulation but we're going to be uh, doing a lot of the easy ones. We're not going to do the uh, super specific ones. Because the, the frame-based manipulation affects drops, enemy pa and uh, boss behavior. And they're littered throughout the run. A lot of this game has a lot of RNG manipulation, maybe if you don't see it at face value. But it does exist. So we're going to start off stage 1 with no stopwatch on purpose, because the only reason to grind for stopwatch would be uh, sub-1130 grind, but I digress. We'll move the save state up here. And go for the... Stopwatch back up here. And kind of just show you a rundown of how to do the bat boost. So that's overall what you want to do. So you saw that right there. How do I manipulate the stopwatch? Stand on this specific pixel. You can see where I'm standing right here. That's where you want to stand so that way when the bat hits you, it hits you on the drop frame. And the first item that drops in stage one is the stopwatch. There are four items in each stage that the game can drop and it cycles one, two, three, four. We'll talk more about that. Maybe later on in level 3. So we'll do it one more time. Set up the stopwatch drop. And I do a little bit of a stutter here on the stopwatch and then uh, manipulate the timing that I jump in order to get over the wall. It's kind of just a feel thing. You kind of develop your own setup for that, but that's what I do. Now I'll move on into the back crit here. So what you want to do is hold right throughout the entire screen, jump where I'm jumping, and then walk off the ledge. That allows you to do a consistent pattern. We'll do it one more time. So watch what I'm doing here. So one, two, three with that candle, get the potion, and then you just walk down. Let's move the safe state up one more time. Two more times. And then we'll set up the back crit. Third stair. Let's see where I'm standing. Third stair. Important. Start the fight. Yep, that's gonna mess things up. So third start to start the fight. When the back comes down, top stair. So you get a fast swoop. And then you're gonna go for one timing the bat on a specific frame. I'll try and show that off first before I explain the. So there's the bat crit. Because uh, when hitting the bat on the exact same frame that you take damage, it causes the whip to bug out, as well as the added bonus of being on stairs, allows Simon to basically one shot the bat. Otherwise, a crit does ten. Otherwise, a crit would just do ten damage, not the stairs. So you see the crit one more time. So now I'll show you what happens if you miss the crit. You can freeze the bat with a stopwatch and just whip him down. Although you don't want to come off the stairs. And then when you do freeze the bat with a stopwatch, the whip rhythm is quite important in order to clear. This game does not appreciate mashing, and the whip cooldown is about 23 frames. So one timing the 23 frame input is a lot easier than just mashing like this. You can just kind of just see how I'm mashing. Now we're going to speed it up. You kind of see it doesn't make... In fact, I have better whip rhythm when I do it, but I digress. So we'll go for the crit one more time. Freeze with the stopwatch and then whip him down. And then we grab the orb and move on to the next stage. So 
So now we're in the level two. There's two things you can do here if you don't have the stop, uh, stopwatch, but we're gonna show off what you do if you had the stopwatch. So if you want to just reset for it. So first screen, walk up the stairs, freeze with the stopwatch there. Not much going on, like I said. Stairs, walk up, jump, stopwatch. So you wanna do the stop, jump up before you activate the stopwatch, that way you lose fewer frames. In the, also you get one more second of the timer and that's not big, too terrible. But we'll do it one more time and then we'll move up the safe state at the top of the staircase. So that was a pause. That was a pause glitch that happens sometimes when you uh, pause the game while holding up. Uh, glitch that happens when you hold up and all that. So you see, you want to start your jump from right here. That way you get a. I wasn't moving forward, so get to this spot and then you jump forward. That's the best way to deal with the bat. So one more time, we're gonna stand right here. This is where you want to. This is where you want to be before you start your first jump. Don't do that. That's what I did in my PB, and that cost me a sub 11.30. Now we're doing full speed. That's kind of how you get over the bat. That's the best way to get over the bat. I'd recommend making a safe state here, just to save a little bit of time. We're just going to jump over the Spear Knight and try and get to the door as fast as possible. So now we're into stage 5. This is the setup I like to do for stage 5. I just whip one candle up top. Actually, this is... So what I like to do is I do a jump here, and then we're gonna grab a can. We're gonna try and grab a heart from these candles up top. Jump over the spear knight, and then grab the big heart down below. That's the easiest way to six, which is the minimum hearts you want to have. But conversely, you could just try and grab the hearts from candles up top. Although I don't suggest it. So like I said, jump here to manipulate the Medusa head. Then we'll, once you cross that candle, don't hit that candle. You're gonna get your way to six hearts. You're gonna do whip buffer here. And then it's an easy damage boost, so we'll do stage five one more time. It's another way to do it, but I'd recommend jumping at the beginning. Manipulate the Medusa head to be too, you can walk under it. So we'll explain that heading right now. So whip while holding, hold right, well, you get on the screen, hold right, whip, you're gonna jump here, and then you're gonna jump and get damage boosted off the Medusa head. The whip buffer is important to do, hold right while you're doing the whip buffer, so we'll show it one more time, see what I'm doing. There is a faster frame, we'll say, for this, uh, faster way to do this screen, but uh, it's a lot harder and I don't really care to show that off right, right now. So now we're into stage six. And this is a particularly tricky screen if you don't have stopwatch. You can see here, stop, and then you're gonna walk past them. You can kind of see where I'm jumping from. So I'll show you where I'm. I'll show you one more time. See where I'm jumping. Just walk underneath. There is a. Lag reduction strat you can do on that screen, but obviously that's not important. So we'll set up again, and we'll show off the uh, bat boost. So you want to get to a specific pixel before jumping. So get to here. Not quite. You want to get to here. Jump up. Uh, jump up. Go. And you can jump up and do the damage boost. That's the easiest way to do it. So you get to right here, one, two. One more time, get to the spot, and then just do a neutral jump, uh, neutral jump to spawn, the, get the bat to move, and then another one to time out the damage boost, and you go up the top. Saves eight seconds over taking the stairs. And also one more thing. When you do the damage boost, make sure you throw the holy water on this bone pillar right there. That way you can spawn a double shot multiplier from the next candle. And you'll need a double shot, because double shot holy water in this game can stun lock, indefinitely stun lock bosses as long as you have hearts. Grab the rosary here just for fun, that's not important though. Grab the big heart here, set up the Medusa fight. So what I like to do is walk to the door. So you want to walk to the door. And then walk to this first window pane. 
I mean, the second window pane from the left. Before starting, then Medusa fight, you stun lock with holy water. So the beginner shrine would be water, two whips, and then water again. Two whips between each holy water. But of course, as you get more comfortable with this game and your whip rhythm gets better, you can do three. We'll do it one more time. Gonna just show off the two water strat. But I prefer, th but as long as you get better, we'll just do uh, three water strat. Three whips between each holy water. A lot of Medusa's taking damage from the holy water, she will not move. It's a nice thing about that. So either strat will either strat you're comfortable with works. If you're on emulate, I'd recommend two. If you have practice on EverDrive, I'd recommend going for three. Like on uh, console or have pl done enough runs on emulator, you're comfortable going for three. It's just a matter of how good you feel about your whip rhythm. So I'll go into level three. So we're gonna dodge that flame and th uh, throw. This. That was not set up. So with a carefully timed holy water toss, you can actually hit all three Fleeman, both Fleeman. You can see right there, we'll do it one more time. There is a faster setup, but uh, I'll show that one off in the different time. My bad. Once again, see how I'm setting up the Fleeman here. And you're gonna boost off this one. I'm gonna hit that big heart there. So one more time through the first screen. Let's try that again. So when you go through this screen, walk up, and you're gonna wanna jump down. Uh, sorry, sorry, holy water. I throw two when I have eight hearts, otherwise I would normally have seven. Kind of this screen affects the pattern, so what you see from the birds, the screen is obviously different. That's another way you can come down, but uh, that risks too much if you have eight hearts, so show this off. Dodge the bone. Just one way to do it. Want to use the whip in order to cancel the landing. But of course that skeleton likes to throw bones, so you gotta be ready for that. So at the end you want to hit this candle to grab the axe, and the axe is going to allow you to pick up holy water. So we'll do the screen one more time. Watch what I'm doing. Sometimes the birds like to troll, but you, as long as you stay on top of everything. Uh-uh. We're not taking the potion. Otherwise, I can't do that strat in stage 8. So yeah, the birds' patterns are different based on what frame you spawn them on. That's something to keep in mind. Now we're into stage 8. There's a, many different ways we're going to do it, but we're going to set up... Uh, Screen. We're gonna do a whip here to manipulate the skeleton at the end of the screen. That's another frame-based manipulation strat. I'm gonna hit that candle with the axe so we can pick up the cross. That's gonna be the go-to sub-weapon for this upcoming boss fight. I'm gonna show you a nice little trick here. You can try it. So that's a f so that potion drop is a f uh, frame-perfect strat. If you want to practice it, I would recommend putting a save state here. And the, uh, how the drops work operate locally, so. If you don't get the stopwatch, this is probably what you want to remember more. Whip, and then you're going to damage boost off the bone pillar. That's the easiest way to get through. Or you can try hurling him, but I don't recommend trying. So if you go for the damage boost strat, make sure you throw the next cross as soon as you hit the gr as soon as you have control. We'll do it one more time. 
<coughs> Make sure you jump over the fireball. And dump down the five hearts. Let's show off the Ouija Bridge strat. So we're, this is the Ouija Bridge. You're gonna hold right the entire time. You kill the bird with first bird with the whip, second bird with the whip. Boss. As long as you hold right, you should be fine. And I got the in-between pattern. There, so I'll show you the backup set for that as well. So we got the in-between pattern, which means that bird gave you the in-between pattern. You just line up to the left while doing the normal Ouija Wii bridge strat. I'll explain that how that fight works with a successful Ouija Wii bridge. So same idea. Except this time we're gonna This time we're not gonna lose frame this time I'm gonna try not to lose frames. I lost one frame on that last one. Just watch the bird patterns. Okay, so that bird dive bombed instead of giving me the in-between pattern, so that means I will have to do a different setup. Nothing too drastic, obviously. This is the correct Ouija Wii bridge manip. Unfortunately, the game dropped double shot too early on me. I'll show you the bit. Faster setup, obviously. So we'll do it one more time. Hopefully I get the double shot this time. Alright, so this is a... The bird dive bombs you want to set up to the right, otherwise you want to set... If it gives you the in-between pattern, set up to the left, and if it gives you a different pattern, I can't help you. So we'll do it again, this time from a right side setup. Go one, two. And what happens there is a critical hit using a multi-glitch set up a multi hit uh, over, uh, glitch using overlapped hit uh, throwing sub weapons through overlapped hitboxes it damages the hitbox on alternate frames you'll see it also pop up in the Dracula fight you have overlapping hitboxes and sub weapon going through bo both of them now we'll come up on one of the bigger skips here case skip you notice I still have the short web so one two three so something's gonna fall down as soon as you gain control and you take one step forward whip three times the speed of the whip buffers doesn't matter you're gonna lose the same number of frames no matter what. And the whip buffer pretty much takes any randomness out of the case, skips up, so you're gonna get to the spot on the exact same frame every single time. And removing that element of randomness makes it a lot easier to go for the skip. So, you're seeing how I'm freezing. Fishman, there's a... Different category, uh, diff there's two patterns I like, I go for the two frame setup. And if you don't get it, you can just pause buffer into a, hopefully a better pattern. We'll do the case skip one more time. Hopefully I get it without having the pause buffer. So that's the perfect frame right there. So make sure you take note of the uh, visual cues that I have there. I'm gonna whip this candle. Play wire this candle so I get a longer whip. Hit that bat. Hit that bat and hope he doesn't drop an axe. So do the case skip one more time. Alright, that's the second frame of the two frame setup. So maybe take a note of that one. So here comes Flea Manali, we'll set up the save state. Gonna water the first one. You're gonna throw holy water on the first one, you're gonna whip the second. Water and then the whip. Key to this screen is to keep moving. Do it one more time. Can I just see what I'm doing? Watch. So like I said, 
This is a stage that you kind of just have to find the screen you have to fine-tune to try and avoid drops altogether. Because next drop, nothing will kill you run faster than that. Do it one more time. Can I just see what I'm doing? Item drops are the worst. I think you, can, you will be able to survive big hard drops. The idea is just to avoid as many drops as you can. So we'll move the safe step on again one more time. So what I like to do is a pause buffer strat on these bone dragons. So the first small candle you hit will drop a double shot. Pause buffer. So just a quick pause buffer, about eight frames. I hit this big, big candle here for five. Uh, big heart there. We do the Frankenstein fight. We got a double shot. We're gonna set up the Frankenstein fight here. So that's if you have feel confident in your weapon, you can do three, otherwise you can just do two. Same strategy as Medusa. In level two. Use the holy water to keep the stun lock. And just whip, do the bulk of the damage with the whip. If you want to go for swag points, you can go that. We called the Dr. Jones. Placing the orb with holy water. So now we're into level 5. If you see my big 20 tutorial, this is where the tutorial stops. We'll move on to the next stage. So an easy strat I like to do here is from here, throw holy water, get a triple shot and a big heart. And then with this Fleeman, never mind. So with the Skeleton. Whoop. And then use the Fleeman as a damage boost. That's one way to do it. If you wanna, there's also another way to do that Fleeman damage boost. Let's wait for him to come to you. Let's go up. So you see this step right here, and then go through the first screen. So if you want to play big bone, small, uh, faster slow bone lottery, you can do that. Otherwise, I would just set up this way. So jump, right, left. That's another way to do it. Or you can alternately go for uh, big versus slow bone by whipping the bomb skeleton. So once again, we'll do the screen. The skeleton's pattern can be random from run to run, so it's kind of just tricky to figure out what you're getting. So I'm gonna hit that skeleton with holy water. Make sure you grab meat here. Unless you're crazy and want to go for, uh... Go for, uh, skipping the meat, I'd recommend picking it up. One more time. It's a slow bone strat. There's different ways you can clear that room. So make sure you grab meat here before you start off the next screen. So coming up is another damage boost with the Fleeman. You just start right here. That's the easiest way to do it. Obviously, there's another the setup. So about halfway between the, in the cracks between the two blocks is where you want to walk to and then do the Fleeman boost because the Fleeman is going to give you the high pattern that's going to be easy to boost off of. 
alternatively, you can set it up this way. Now we're in the, the biggest room in stage 14. We're going to jump over the red skeleton. We're going to jump over all skeletons. Walk down. This is a step I like to do. Whip. Candle water. Water. Make sure you hit both the spear knight and the red skeleton with the holy water. I'm going to stunlock the axe knight with holy water. Any enemy that's hit by the holy water will be... Their hitbox will be the same. Their collision detection is disabled. Which makes it pretty nice. Walk through enemies. And now we're in stage 15. This is one of the more dangerous parts of the game, especially if you have low health. So you're going to hit this... Hit the bone pillar. You're going to stun the bone pillar with holy water. Walk through him. I grab this candle here and then take out the skeleton. And then damage boost off the uh, bone pillar. And jump over the fireballs. So I have eight hearts. This is what you want to have. Set up here. So I have six hearts, so I'll show off the death kill. Okay. You want to stand right about here when you're getting ready to fight death. Any further to the left, and, and you're in trouble. Okay. Water. So again, want to set up on the point, make sure you have holy water. And kind of the key, if you don't do it, death will throw Sice at you. And you don't want that. You don't want Sice on the screen. So water make sure he does make sure death doesn't land on that spot. Otherwise he throws sights at you. So I have six holy waters here, so you can just hit them like that. As well, that's another strat you can pull off on death. Made a mistake there, but that's uh, not important. So we'll do the death fight one more time. I recommend adding this as a save state and you want to practice death because death is probably the more diff one of the more difficult fights to set up. So now heading into the final stage, you're dealing with Dracula. So the first screen is the bat bridge. You're going to do it without losing frames. So hold left the entire way. As long as you have holy water, this is not a big deal. So the holy water hit that stopwatch candle. You can just see the setup that I'm doing. I'm gonna make sure you copy that. So now we're with the clock tower, the obligatory Castlevania clock tower stage. So we're gonna take a damage boost from the bone. Do it one more time. And just show the timing for it. Damage boost, and you go up the stairs. Take the right way for the skeleton to come over, and then jump. Damage boost. So we'll do it one more time. From the top. Move the safe state up. Boost. That's the faster damage boost. If you get that, you save half a second. So, boost. Hit the skeleton. Big heart. Stopwatch. Conversely, you can grab meat and get lucky on a Fleeman double. Fl uh, big heart drops. So we'll do it one more time. Don't want to have any good luck in this situation. So stop. You can grab meat here. This is a safety strat against Drac. And then take the stairs. Conversely, you can skip the meat. The meat allows you to survive Drac a little bit easier. Grab this heart as well. I'm gonna set up the Dracula fight. So the key is to make sure you don't lose frames, so... 
in this setup. Do it one more time because I want to have more hearts. Then once you, once the steep green stops scrolling, you can catch up. Now here's Drac. If you do it correctly, you should have one of two patterns. So that's a slow pattern. Let's see if we can show off the fast pattern. There's the fast pattern. So those are the two patterns you can get. There's different setups. So this would be my setup for the fast, the slow pattern. So he spawns on top of your shoulder. That was another slow pattern. Sec uh, what pattern you have at the beginning matters. So fast pattern, he spawns way out to the left like that. Slow pattern, he's gonna spawn right on top of you. Two things to keep in mind. So grab the double shot, move out to the left. So if you get the slow pattern, grab the multiplier, walk back to the coffin, and then back to the right. And you're gonna set up for a... Versus if you get the... If you get the fast pattern, try and get that one. Jack's not cooperating. Come on, Drac, give me the fast pattern. If you get the fast pattern, you want to step all the way to the right, so he spawns way out to the left. So those are two patterns you have to figure out. So that's the crit, Dracula crit. I apologize for that, we have to set it up again. So, my visual cue is when his cape opens up, usually. Of course, like the back crit, the drag crit is also frame perfect. And you can see how much damage a crit does. Uh, if you get the fast pattern, you would uh, set up. So then we're gonna... If you don't get the crit, just go one, two. And set for a five cycle, so. Dracula has two spawns. If you go for on his third, just read fast or slow. But I think that was a fast pattern, so it'll spawn on top of you. If you get the slow pattern, he spawns way out to the left. That's anticipating his fourth spawn. But if you do get the crit, like that, you can just kill him that way. So slow pattern, far out to the left. And then the fifth pattern, he'll spawn on top of you. Let's see if I get the fast pattern on, on third cycle. So if you get the fast pattern of the fourth cycle, it'll spawn on top of you. you. Gotta be careful of fireballs, and then the fifth pattern's gonna be way far to the right. And that's typically how I go five cycle. Anything beyond that, you kinda just have to guess. We'll do it one more time, we'll finish him off. Slow pattern. No, wait, no. That was fast pattern. You can use the holy water to deflect fireballs. If you're too close, if you feel like you're too close. And finish him off, and he transforms into the cookie monster. And the whip, uh, you're gonna use the holy water to stun lock him and then head. And this is kind of the setup for taking him out. Kind of thing. With triple shot, you can alternate. Setting up the fight one more time.
This is the easiest way to do it. You can alternate two waters if your heart count is low. Or you can go for alternate. Or something Salt calls the machine gun holy water strats. Recommend watching that video if you're interested in seeing some of the stuff in the Castlevania world record chase over the last five years, but once again. You're whipping his head. It's the only thing that's vulnerable. I'm gonna show off the machine gun strats one more time. And Cookie Monster. If you have at least 12 hearts at phase two, you're fine. So then once he's dead, you grab the orb and that would be the final time. And that would be your Castlevania any percent speed run. So thank you for taking the time to watch the tutorial. I wish you a good luck in your future Castlevania speed running endeavors. Make sure to follow me at on Twitch at twitch.tv slash freelance1787 if you want to see how I play it. Also, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. But once you're once you've cleared the game, you can get your credits and your uh, puns of different various horror genre movie actors like Dracula, Christopher B, and so on and so forth. It's kind of like a little fun thing at the end. Overall, once you get to that screen, it's kind of just victory. But you've uh, beaten a run that a uh, difficult casual game faster than uh, most humans on planet Earth. You played the greatest role in the story by being an awesome speedrunner. That's how it goes. Thank you for playing.